Our next guest was the recipient of this ugly phone message. Listen for yourself. I don't care about your cancer. You go and you huddle with other people without a mask, but then you have a problem with a f***ing Republican? F*** you, you piece of f***. You do f- mother f- off and die. Whoa, that is about as ugly as it gets. That was a call to State Senator Tina Polsky's office. She's from Boca Raton. After she asked the state surgeon general to leave her office after he refused to put on a face mask. Senator Polsky is in treatment for breast cancer with compromised immunities. A few days after that meeting, Surgeon General Joseph Latipo responded that he could not communicate well wearing a mask. Florida's Senate president condemned what he called that lack of respect, but then came those ugly messages by phone and by social media. Senator Polsky joins us today via Zoom. First of all, Senator, welcome, and how, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm actually feeling very well. I completed my radiation treatment last week and uh, will be probably getting some medication going forward. But otherwise, you know, a lot is behind me and I'm looking forward to getting back to Tallahassee in uh, the week after next. Well, that is all good news. Uh, Senator Polsky, describe to us late October, you're in your office. Uh, the new Surgeon General says, I want to come by, have a chat with you. Tell us what happened. So he scheduled an appointment in my office and I have set up a mask rule in my office because I had my diagnosis in September. So before I came back for the committee weeks and knew I'd be meeting with a lot of different folks, we decided to set up a rule. We have a sign outside and we have plenty of masks available in our waiting area. And um, he came with two aides and I asked him to put on a mask and he refused. And unfortunately, it turned into kind of a debate standing in the waiting room of my office and went on way longer than it should. And, you know, I was in I was wearing a mask and my aide was, but it's just too close proximity and I was very uncomfortable. And after a little while of this discussion going back and forth, uh, I asked him to leave. I said, you know, I know all I need to know about you as the Surgeon General, if you won't respect my wishes. I said I have a serious health condition. I didn't say what it was at the time because I hadn't been public yet. And after the incident, I just knew I had to go public with my own diagnosis. I was planning on it anyway. This just sort of sped me up. And then after that announcement, then I came out with a story about the Surgeon General. This man is supposed to be our top public health official, and he can't even respect the wishes of a patient, who, a patient, a citizen who asks him to please put on a mask. I mean, the simplest accommodation. He All he had to say was, Senator, I disagree with your position on masks, but if it makes you feel more comfortable, I'll put it on and we can proceed. And let me explain to you why I think masks yeah. don't work. Did he, okay, did he, fine. Did he, did he give you a reason why he was going to refuse to put a mask on after you asked him? I think he was kind of prepared for it because I asked him to put it on. He said, I don't do interviews in masks. Huh. And he said we could go outside or go in the hallway, but neither of those were appropriate locations to hold this very important conversation. I had a lot of questions for him. I'm on the ethics and elections committee and I get to vote for him and ask him questions. And so I thought it was important that we sit in my office like I do with everyone else who visits me and I've had 100% compliance. It's never been a problem. I asked him, is there a particular reason you can't wear a mask? And he wouldn't give me an answer. Senator Polsky, I want to ask you a question born of a perch where we are sort of nonpartisan and objective and try to stay out of the political drama, which clearly masks have become by all accounts. Shockingly, what, yes. What what is um, what was the purpose of not dealing with this in a more internal way? Uh, clearly, you were upset. Clearly, what he did upset you. Uh, clearly, it has future implications for his job. Why not deal with that in a more um, a more internal way instead of making it public, knowing that, or, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm sure you assumed that it would sort of take on this partisan overtones that it had. Well, I did try to deal with it in an internal way. I asked him many times to put on a mask in my office. Had he done that, there never would have been a story. And he just refused. I, I guess my, my question is not about the mask so much, but about his refusal. Why not deal with that within the Senate offices? You know, the Senate president weighed in and, and did condemn that, what he called a lack of respect for you. 
Um, but but it in becoming public, it sort of fed into the machine of ugliness that all of us have seen on all sides of the political spectrum, uh, as evidenced by the phone call that you received. I think it was just too important to kind of let it die out, the story, as if I had just reported to the Senate office, then what? Then they would have said, oh, that's too bad, unfortunate. It never would have gotten the attention that it deserves because this is supposed to be the top public official. How can he be in charge of 21 million people's health when he didn't even care about mine? And he couldn't even do the most simple task that doctors do every single day. And as he was walking out, I said, don't you wear a mask in surgery? And he just kind of laughed it off. And then he made a comment. I like to um, have fun with unreasonable people, something along those lines. And my aide heard him say verbatim. So this was just too important. I represent over half a million people. They needed to know what's going on. Every single day, I receive emails and phone calls from constituents and people all across the state about every issue up and down um, you know, the legislature, anything, everything you can imagine. And so they have a right to know who the governor put up, this man who doesn't is unfit to be the top public health person in our state, and they all deserve that information. Yeah, so they uh, could write to their senators and their representatives and tell them how they feel. Senator, I take it when you get a chance to vote on his confirmation, you will vote no. What do you think your uh, colleagues in the Senate are going to do? I know Senator uh, Wilton Simpson, the president of the Senate, came to your defense. He said that Dr. Lampado had acted unprofessionally. How, what is your sense about his confirmation? Yeah, and that's exactly, you know, why I think it's so important that to show that it's a bipartisan in nature, that what he did to me was not partisan. What he did to me was just wrong on so many levels. Um, and so having that bipartisan support in the Senate is really important to me, and I, I'm very, very grateful to have it. I think personally what's going to happen is they will not hold confirmation hearings. His time will run out in this session. And then the governor can renominate him, and we have one more session where he can serve. Uh, and if we don't have a confirmation hearing next year, meaning the year after this this legislative session, then he's out. So maybe the easiest way for them to manage it is to not hold the hearings rather than put up everyone for a yes or no vote on him. Uh, just for the record, we have been inviting the new Surgeon General to join us mm -hmm. here on This Week in South Florida, both before this subject ever came up and again after. Uh, hasn't been able to so far, but we hope that he will accept soon. Um, one more question to you, Senator, about some of the criticism I've heard about this incident. There are people who, uh, you know, there are people who do not dispute the science that masks do have some ounce of prevention against all communicable diseases. Um, and there are critics who say that they've seen you in your social media unmasked, holding um, court in your office, even hugging other people unmasked, and, and question why you are so upset about this incident. Uh, is that a valid criticism? And, and maybe explain why that is. It's not valid. And actually, uh, you don't have it correct. Um, there's no pictures of me hugging anyone unmasked. Um, there are, they, these people combed through Facebook and hours of committee hearings to find me unmasked next to people that I know who are vaccinated. And it is not up to anyone else to tell me when I feel safe and when I feel comfortable in a situation. It is up to me. And in my office, that's the other thing. I've never had um, meetings with people who have come in to see me without masks in my office. So none of those pictures were in my office. And I've been 100% compliant. So in a, in a closed office space where I hold meetings with multiple people at a time that we are not able to be six feet apart, then I ask people to wear a mask. And that's where I feel comfortable and that's where I've set the rules. So he should have respected my wishes. It doesn't matter what I do elsewhere. All he had to do was respect my wishes uh, when he came to my office and he failed to do so. Yeah. Senator Polsky, uh, respect is the word of the day, and you have ours, and uh, we thank you for being with us today. I just want to uh, mention one thing before we go to a tease, that even vaccinated people can spread COVID, um, and that is also science. So I just wanted to put that on the record. And that's why we wear masks, to give us an extra ounce of protection. Because if you sneeze, it'll be caught in the mask and, or cough, and I don't want to be the recipient while I was in the middle of cancer treatment. That would have delayed my treatment. So I would appreciate everyone just just really accepting, you know, my decision about how I feel safe. Senator, thanks to you. We best of luck you. Uh, on your health. We wish you all the best. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you so much.